Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to explore how to create a two-dimensional density plot. We're going to use the Irish data frame, so I've pre-prepared that variable. Let me just run that. I'll clear my memory first actually. Then I'll run. You can see it's now been added into my environment. So the Irish data frame is the common data frame that we use um, normally for demonstration of classification in machine learning. Um, but it will do for repeated observations. So we've got 150 observations and we're going to use something like the sepal length and the petal length or the width and the length, whatever. So a density plot is very similar to a uh, scatter plot. So first of all, what we need to do is use our library of ggplot2 because that's what we've been working with throughout the data visualization section of this uh, these tutorials. So I'll run those two lines, make sure they're in my memory. Okay. Now I'm going to use the ggplot command. I'm going to pass in the data. Is equal to the iris data frame. We're going to set an AS layer. So on the x-axis, the one along the bottom, we're going to use the um, so let's just just have a look at iris data frame and see what fields we've got. We're going to use the petal length and on the y iris data frame we're going to use the petal width okay let's run that let's just call it something first plot give it a placeholder there we go in memory that's now been created so basically that's that's handled the data part and the aesthetics part of that so what aesthetics to the data layer so what's how on x and y axes then, with my plot, I'm going to add a point level. Actually, no, first of all, we're going to add the stat underscore density 2D command. Let's run that. And it gives me a nice density plot. To add a bit more um, visualization to that, we're also going to add points. So you can see. You can see where the clustering of points occurs. Let's just change this to uh, sepal width and see what how that changes the visualization. Need to make sure that's uppercase. So the thing about R it is case sensitive. So it changes the distribution slightly. So we'll use this one for our visualization. Within the uh, density um, parameter we're going to add an aesthetics layer here and we're going to set the colour of our contour lines equal to a level that's a special command in R so the level of the um, density as you can see it gives then gives you a level indication up the right hand side Let me just change that to colour see if that makes any difference oh. See if that makes any difference. The American and the English spelling it should produce the same visualization, but you never never know. So as the level gets higher and higher, the density you can see starts to be affected. So the the line colors change essentially. Another way to improve this visualization is to um, to map um, the actual um, dent fill to a density and use a raster density with a contour. So if that makes no sense whatsoever, this is the command that you use to, use to achieve it. So instead of my aesthetics having a color equal to the level, we now specify the fill is equal to how dense the clustering of the points are. Here then, we specify that we want a raster type clustering those options depend on how you want to visualize it and we want to get rid of the contour lines so if I run this now you can see that's given me quite a nice visualization which has replaced the uh, the kind of gray space or white space around it and it gives you that kind of density estimation of where they fall so it's a bit like a heat map Okay, so to expand on that a little bit, we could also do 
Let's take a copy of this again. And for this time, what we're going to do is we're going to change a few things about the command. So we still want to keep the um, aesthetics, the fill equal to the density, so the clustering of the points. We want to make the geometry now, we want to change that slightly to a tiled geometry. That slightly changes the output. And if we then wanted to extend like this visualization shows, we want to add points, we could use geom underscore point. Yeah. And here in the geom layer, we could also add an aesthetic, so color of the point, say white. Let's see if that works. Yeah. It's not picked up the white color very well. Um, let's say uh, yellow. Let me just change that. I don't think I need it as the aesthetic actually. I think I can just directly specify the color within the geometry. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's better. I didn't need an aesthetics layer there. I can directly change the color within the geometry layer. Let's make that white. So as you can see, we've got quite a nice looking visualization now. Um, it's got you that density plot, it gives you the points so you can see how the density is made up. Um, that's just by using the special fill equals density command, the same as the color equals the level, so the number of levels that we've got within the uh, clustering. And we can add points just by, like you say, appending the plus symbol and whatever geometry we want to add to that. Again, if we want to keep going and just get a bit ridiculous with this scatter plot, we could add a, a line as well to it. That wouldn't mean much across two dimensions, but we could add a line. So we could also specify that color equals white as well, just to. Uh... So basically, what I'm saying is my plot, which is all my data and my x and y coordinates, add a density layer, this. Specify the fill equal to how clustered the points are. So you can see the blue bit really is around where the points are. Yeah. You can then specify whatever type of geometry you want. I think the raster one looks better myself. Get rid of the contour lines, which were, if I ran this one here, they're the contour lines. Add again. A G on point, color equals white. So you just specify what you want the color of your points to be. You can also add, um, specify the shape and the the character type. So we could I could also say um, A S C E X equals eighteen. Yeah. It changes the type of points. I'm going to get rid of that though because that's uh, made it look ridiculous. Again, run that line. And now what it shows is um, a ge geometrical line that connects the points. Like I said, um, it's across two dimensions, so a line chart there really wouldn't be appropriate, but you could just keep appending geometries. That's the power of R. You can just keep adding things together and see what your resulting visualization turns out like. One last thing, um, I'm gonna add this again. This is gonna be called my density with points. I'm gonna specify it as a placeholder. And then I'm just gonna complete it off by adding some labels. So xlab equals petal length. My y lab equals uh, what are we? Sepal 
width. And that just changes the um, that just changes what's on my x and y axes. You can also change the size of that, etc. We'll deal with more axes options in the axes section of these tutorials because it's a whole it's a whole demo in itself. Um, but for now, that's how you create a quite a nice looking density plot in R. So they're the various different versions of the density plot that we used. Again, you can just keep going with it. You can also you could also change the gradient so you could add a scale fill uh, brewer there to specify your high and low points. But for now, I think it looks pretty cool with the blue. Um, but like you say, please use the help system to look at the stat density 2D. That'll give you more insight. And you can also check out each one of these options. Okay guys, um, catch me next time. I hope that, that uh, tutorial has been useful and I'll see you again. Please uh, keep watching my YouTube videos, subscribe um, and also follow me on my Hudson's Hacks web, web page. I keep adding tutorials as and when I can, but yeah, look out for new updates. Thanks very much.